What's up guys, before we get to today's video, it's your last chance to get involved in a giveaway which is gonna land you a spot on one of the Adventure Drives trips. We have one left for 2024, and that's starting in Charleston, driving the tail of the dragon, going to the back of the dragon, driving through Greenbrier, which is a gorgeous resort in White Sulphur Springs, West Virginia, and ending in Washington, DC. I'm gonna include your flight, I'm gonna get you a car. You can pick one of my uh, sports cars, it's local enough that I can ship a car down for you. So you can pick, just say you want the 488, you want the Huracan, whatever you want, we'll get that included in it. Um, just no SUVs, don't, don't pick one of my SUVs, pick a sports car. Uh, but it's gonna be a good time, the only thing you're gonna pay for is gas. That's gonna be October 9th through the 13th. I'm gonna do the giveaway and have a drawing before I go to Germany. Um, that's gonna be the 21st. So we have about 10 days in which you can enter this contest. I'm gonna do 500, up to 500 posters, because even the last one we only sold 400. So it's gonna be up to 500 posters. Link in the description is superspeeders.com. And one of you guys, I will see you out there. It's gonna be a good time. All right, guys, so news was, was going a little bit further than the usual car channels, right? When, when the car channels are not reporting it and you start seeing it on more larger networks, you got a big story. Well, guess what? Hoonigan is filing for bankruptcy, and that's like, okay, whatever. I, I sort of expected that. I wasn't expecting the debt load. They have $1.2 billion in debt. Right now, like, whoa, like, what was, I want to see Ken Block's credit card bill. No. Kahunigan was acquired by a venture capital firm, and that rolled in with a bunch of other brands that they were buying up. Back in COVID, everybody has all this money and they're buying all this stuff. So Hoonigan started about 10 years ago, or a little over 10 years ago. You guys can fact check the crap out of me because I know the surface level stuff. I don't know the details. And I don't really care about the details, but I'm gonna tell you essentially what happened, why it happened, why I'm not surprised, but also, this could be a, a big firm like that could be loading other debt into this bankruptcy to clear their books from other stuff. So there could be other things involved there that may be surprising if you start really going through the line items, because this could have been something they've been working on for a while. But I saw this coming and a lot of people would say like, yeah, of course Hoonigan's shutting down because Ken Block passed and he was a huge part of Hoonigan. It's got nothing to do with that. Then you had all these other talent guys that were on Hoonigan that were systematically leaving. And that's the telling statistic. And that generally isn't because they're unhappy with the direction, right? That's the story you're always going to get. It's like, yeah, you know, we're having our creative differences. 99.9% .9 of the time, it's always gonna come down to money. And the creative differences are generally, we're not gonna pay you the same amount of money we've been paying you. We're gonna cut back how much we're paying you. Your budgets are gonna be reduced. And they sort of strangle the talent into producing the same or better content with less money. So they're getting rewarded less and then the company is trying to make more. So that, that is pretty much why the talent leaves a company, whether it's drive or motor trend or anything like that. It's usually when the money dries up and that's the indicator that somebody is now saying, you know what, we've been floating this growth model of like, we're gonna do whatever and we're gonna grow the company and we're gonna invest in it. And they're like, all right, well now we gotta start making money. And so now we can't be spending $120 to make 50. So that's usually when that seesaws, that is usually signaling the beginning of the end. Now also you're gonna see YouTube has been, the ad sense game or the ad revenue that is out there, the ad purchases, the ad buyers, are buying significantly less. And if you have a business model that is relying on that for your cash flow and your revenue, you're strangling everything out of the company and there's no surprise that this happened. Now, the 1.2 billion, that's the big shocking number that everyone's gonna be like, holy crap, like how do you have a 1.2? Who's lending? If you're 800 million in debt, who's giving you another 400 million in credit? It's, it's a lot more complicated than that. I will let somebody in the financial realm go into that, but you're, you're wrapping in a bunch of businesses, which are also, anyone that says that the economy is great right now, I'm gonna have to, to have a hard disagreement on that, right? Business is down here. My rentals were slower by 10% this year. 
and I know everybody else I talk to, it's down. Sure, some people are doing great, but a lot of people aren't. If you look at key indicators like the repossession rates, the amount of credit card debt, the amount of people defaulting on stuff, the interest rates on everything, and the fact that people are then borrowing at these higher interest rates because they need to borrow, you start adding it up or you look at the, the, the depreciation on cars now. We didn't have this a couple of years ago. Now all of a sudden, all of the cars that that these people were buying for like three years old, but they're paying 3,000 over MSRP for a Tesla or something like that with 30,000 miles on it or a Subaru, you're running into a situation where now they're like, oh crap, that $15,000 car that I paid $40,000 for and got a loan for is now worth 10 like it should have been. And now I'm stuck because I still owe 26 on it. So you have all these people upside down on loans. You've got all this just hodgepodge of like, People not spending money as freely because they don't have it as much and it's more expensive to borrow it. So if they're going to borrow it, they're not going to go spend it on stupid stuff. They're going to spend it on stuff they need. And the writing is on the wall, right? Like I still don't get why and uh, my personal accounts, I moved a bunch of it to cash, right? Like there's uh, through my brokerage, they've got a cash account pays me over 5% interest. I'm like, I'll take the 5% guarantee and hedge against all this stuff. Am I a financial advisor? No. Am I usually pretty good at gut checking this? Yes. Like everybody saw this coming in like 08 too. Anytime there's this huge like financial crash, you sort of have to be ignorant to ignore all the indicators and say like, oh, uh, this is it's good. No, nothing's, nothing's happening. Like let's like the market's great. There are more people on the planet, right? This is my top level stuff. There are more people on the planet, more people spending money, but people individually are spending less. Does this affect the wealthy? No. It affects most people, which drive the economy. It drives companies willing to spend money on sales. All of this stuff, it's cyclical. Again, I am not an economist. I am not a financial advisor. But I am not surprised that when you see a company starting to have everyone vocally and verbally saying, like, I'm out, I'm leaving this company, it's generally not just because they don't like their manager. And there's a lot of people that stick out jobs for a long time as long as they feel like they're being treated fairly and they're being fairly compensated. Reverse that. As long as they feel like they're being fairly compensated and then as long as they're treated reasonably well. You're willing to accept some, some not great treatment as long as you're being paid well. It's when you're not paid well that it's signaling the beginning of an end for a lot of companies. Now, there's a lot of companies that are, that are going through this. Hoonigan is still going to be around, right? It appears that they're going to be restructuring through bankruptcy and they've got to have some sort of assets. I don't know where a billion two comes from. Like that, that's to me, even with these companies, like the companies have all this inventory, stuff like that. There's, there may be 40, 50 million. If you told me $50 million, I think it's a lot. 1.2 billion is nuts. That's like another level. That, that would almost be like grounds for suing somebody for mismanaging this whole conglomerate. But unless they're doing like, rich people financial games and they're shoving all this bad debt into a bankruptcy to get off of it and get out of it from other companies. We'll see what happens, but uh, it's not what you think. It's not like they just ran up a big credit card bill or they've got these, and even if they bought 20 warehouses, 50 warehouses across the world and they filled them up with cars, cars are worth money. Like they're, they're still on the balance sheet. There's still the assets there. This to have 1.2 billion in debt, I would assume that they may be talking that they have more debt than they do cash or assets. So their books are upside down by 1.2 billion. Because I saw another number that said 1.7 billion. Either way, those are big numbers. So to take something from a, a small little brand that, that launched hard and did phenomenal while, while Ken was running it, and then it being sold to a corporate company, no surprise, but also, holy crap. Stay tuned, it's not gonna be the first one. That's the same thing I've always said in the rental game. I will stick out these, these uh, dips and waves in the economy and the c companies that don't belong in my industry always go out of business. And as long as you stay the course and you stick to your game plan, you're usually going to do pretty good. Rob Ferretti, thank you for watching. See you tomorrow.